dare they even do this, but we are ready to go into picks and bans. Team Envy at the bottom of the table, one and seven. Phoenix one has been sliding, but sitting at four and four, still puts them in a tie for fourth, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and, very fitting. And they are, they do look very strong still, right? Uh, to me, Arrow, uh, top two, if not the best AD carry in the league right now. Uh, he's just, he's so at home with the Jin Varus meta. Um, very accurate with his skill shots, and, and he's had a very high damage per minute as well for uh, AD carries, which is definitely huge for them. Ryu as well uh, has worked really nicely here in the North American LCS and had a very nice transition. But uh, yeah, we'll see if they can turn around here. So far, fans coming out, uh, slight changes as Graves rises tremendously in priority. I've been talking a lot with a couple of the um, LCS junglers. To me, he's risen up there to tier one, just a number one yeah, pick. I think um, so. A lot of people still really like the Rengar, you know, even after uh, taking out the W. Um, but uh, definitely deserving of taking that spot in the ban phase. We actually are going to find both of them on the ban phase here, but all the lethality AD carries are still available. Mm -hmm. And if you've been listening to any competitive, competitive League of Legends in any region, you know that lethality is it's the name the of the game. Go to, right now. exactly. We'll see multiple Edge of Knights probably uh, on yep. both sides. And right now, yep, a couple a couple more locked in. Kha'Zix, more significant nerfs than the Rengar, in my opinion. Pretty mm. big damage nerfs. Okay. Uh, large large win rate uh, um, yeah. hit that he did take. And when you're ch when you're playing the champion, you really do feel that difference. Yeah, absolutely. In in a late, ugh, I can't talk. In a late game full build, you're losing about 10% damage per Q. Then obviously the cooldown difference is pretty meaningful as well. Uh, locked alongside that Kha'Zix, that will be for Medios playing it. He's locking in the top laner for Zig, which is a Maokai. So uh, hasn't changed much Phoenix one wise. His champions all kind of making sense as far as picking them early on. Yeah. The other thing though, I want to do touch back on the Kha'Zix because specifically Kha'Zix was one of the ones that Medios mentioned to me when I was doing the alt stream a couple weeks ago that he had not been keeping up with as far as the new meta. Uh, he was like, yeah, I'm playing a bunch of Warwick and Vi and uh, it's having a lot of fun on stream. But Cute. Uh, we're like, yeah, yeah, Kha'Zix is a new hotness. Need to evolve your W early on and uh, we'll see how he, how he does perform with this champion because that's one of those damage oriented sure. assassin champions. Uh, funny to say assassin because a lot of the builds also involve like Black Cleaver and, and Hex Drinkers yeah. and stuff. So those are getting changed a bit a bruiser, too. but that's, um, that's true. He, he should be going full lethality. Here. I mean, back when Kha'Zix <laughs> was a jungler in Medios' time, it was bruiser. It was when R gave damage up to you rush Hex mm -hmm. Drinker every game. So uh, that's kind of fun to see. He has played the champ better before. Uh, this at least has been coming out more frequently as a soft counter pick to Kha'Zix, the Spiderlings break isolation. And Unless you duel a little bit better. I'm not saying yeah. you smash the matchup, yeah. but I've seen a lot of Elise in the cosmos. Super before. soft, yeah, for me. Um, he definitely can dodge Cocoon, and that's a huge part about playing Gitzer. But what Elise does bring is, you know, help with this siege. Whenever you do have Varus, you're looking at that mid game poke, uh, the very annoying spam of arrows that was going to come out, and Elise having the double form can also, you know, set him up with a Cocoon, makes mm -hmm. it very easy to chain CC uh, and land that Varus ultimate, or the other way around as well as some Shen for some bottom lane protection if uh, you do focus down there. Because a lot more teams are putting more focus into the bottom lane where they have these lethality AD carries to actually get them off the ground and get the Drakes rolling in. But yeah, these things spike so early, a straight or Dirk Varus is going to do like 300 damage to the Q. And uh, if you're a Caitlyn or a Jin walking into that, that's a third of your health bar gone right away. So very volatile lane, Zed Band away, the Malzahar, and the Echo as well. Yeah, uh, a couple of split bands here. I do like the, the flex bands coming from Phoenix 1. Taking out the multi options here, but really, overall, the team's very standard so far in the drafts. All the roles have been matched. Uh, the the roles in the team fights have also pretty similarly been matched. Um, both of them going to have a decently sturdy front line. Team Envy definitely big fans of having that extra versatility of the Shen top. Seraph, their big shot caller in the top lane, likes to go for the split push um, and likes to be in control of the you know extra stand united, the extra global here mm -hmm. to create plays and and uh, be the one to start that off for the squad. Ryu here going to grab up the Corky has had success on that and it's definitely a great bully champion for him. This is one of the guys been tracking the positioning basically of mid laners in lane phase for a very long time ever since worlds yeah. and ryu is one of the most forward facing and forward playing mid laners before 15 minutes huge amount of time spent across the halfway point of the map uh, because he he has been you know he's aggressive in trades he's aggressive in uh, early on contesting cs and corky is one of the great champions for that i'm so
absolutely. That's going to be the pickup for him. And now we wait as uh, Hakua once again reprises his role on Zyra. I know last week we had the stat where never won without the champion. And since they lost more games, that's still true. But, <laughs> uh, you know, worth noting that they banned away the, the pocket Nami from Adrian. The Zyra is still being picked up. But that is one of the champions who received nerfs. Of course, she's not been picked nearly as high priority the Zyra, but still clearly worthy of picking as far as Envy is concerned. And they're going to round up the lineup with Azir. Uh, has been seen as a counter pick to Corky and will show up again here doing that. Also setting up some decent siege here. Uh, we mentioned a little bit with just the Varus and Elise showing, but when you add in the Zyra for uh, counter engage as well as Azir and the Wall of Soldiers, quite a decent amount of disengage here for Team Envy if they can get to the point um, which they have been, you know, towards that 30 minute mark. And we'll see if they can actually execute in the team fights because Maokai, no matter how many disengaged tools you have, he's very difficult to keep out of your yes. team uh, and usually finds a way in. All right, we'll see if he can get in this lineup because, yes, the sieging and the poke is very, very powerful. A couple of single target skill shots for CC from Team Envy, and maybe his ear can knock them all the way if they do get in. But yeah, it seems like it's about Jin setting up and Maokai and Kazix following through then. As everyone's rotated the champions, the swaps have gone through, and everyone's in their proper roles. Yes, sir. The last pick there was that Misfortune, counterpick for Zyra, everybody's mm -hmm. super familiar with now. Yeah. Have the extra speed and killing plants off, but um, also you do have to worry about getting snared up by the uh, Jin Ws. The, you know, Misfortune, whether it's support or AD carry, the lot of level damage. 6 ultimate <laughs> can really take you down. Hurts a whole lot. So things to be aware of for sure. Adrian bringing out the Misfortune here into this one alongside Arrow in the bot lane. And as the time ticks down, the coaches shake hands and walk off the stage for the first of up to three times here today. Best three to decide who can win this one. Phoenix one sitting at four and four. Team Envy sadly alone at one and seven, especially now that Team Dignitas has won. They are mm -hmm. uh, well behind the bottom, you know, the other people in the bottom of the standings. So Envy have a lot of room to make up, but we'll see if week five ends up being the turning point for this squad. We know the players can be good enough. It's just about the team actually playing well enough to get the match wins. Yes, and we shall see how well Medios does with Phoenix One here in the debut. Setting up uh, us up for their later match as well. Against Team Envy, though, Seraph and crew desperately want to turn their season around. They desperately want to get another win on the board for themselves. All right, and the gates are opened, and here come the champions onto the rift. Phoenix One in the red, matching their home colors. Envy in blue, also the same, so that's kind of convenient. And we'll see how Medio subbing in for Phoenix One of the jungle can make this work out well. Now, Medios plays his game. It won't be seen really in the early game impact. In fact, uh, Phoenix One more often killed for first blood than they've gotten it so far this season. So they're not expecting really insane early ganks in the absence of Inori. But we'll see how it turns on later on. That being said, if we do see it, um, I'm a huge fan of Kha'Zix plus Maokai combo. Maokai brings everything that Kha'Zix doesn't. Kha'Zix brings almost everything that you can want in a champion. Uh, damage! <laughs> Great! Tons of damage and mobility. Um, but uh, Maokai is the one that's going to bring that root as well as the follow-up knockup. So Zig can very well set up ganks, even on someone tanky like Shen. Uh, and they could combine for early action up there, but you're right. Other than that, I would expect them to wait for a package. Uh, one of the big things about Corky, and especially if he's going to be a versus Azir here, I think that Ryu actually has a lot of freedom. Uh, as far as the early game goes, and we'll see what he does with the early package, because that is definitely a strong playmaking tool. All right, well, to get ourselves ready for the game and the Midlanders trade blows, we do have a quick sideline report from Patriot Time. Take it away, buddy. Thank you very much, Freak. Had a quick chat with Coach Fly over on the P1 side. I asked him about the draft. He said he thinks it went pretty well. The fact that uh, they, want, they were a little afraid to play against Runga and LeBlanc meant that he felt like he got a bit of an advantage in the ban phase. When I asked him about patch 7.3, he said things changed a little bit, but not too much. And in general, despite the changes with the patch and with Medios, he's feeling confident. Back to you guys. Good signs already. I just want to touch on what we just saw on screen there uh, because one of the big parts about jungling is doing the neutral camps. A lot of people do ignore it and they just kind of, you know, face tank them and uh, don't really plan out their routes that much. But Medios here on Kha'Zix, um, starting the W for the small Raptors. You get a lot of bonus experience from every small camp. Uh, you know, people have heard that quite, quite often due to your jungle item, but um, starting off with a W and killing off all the small Raptors will give you the level two in time so you can level up your Q on Kha'Zix just in time for the big Raptor to be isolated. And mm -hmm. it's actually not a super difficult camp to start on. Uh, it's a very efficient camp as far as the total experience that you're going to get out of your own jungle. 
in the first clear. And like we said, this is the style of Mies. He grinds out smaller leads at a time. Smaller leads that are more consistent, uh, rather than going for those big ganks, going for the riskier first blood and, and maybe giving up one of your camps in, in return for that attempt at uh, trying to influence one of the lanes. Well, we do have a difference of style already. Lyric did a pretty simple three camp clear. Raptors into red into Krugs. Recalled for a machete and went back into the lane. Meteos is hard cleaning the entire jungle except for Krugs. It's going to be a later recall for him. So they've made some small differences. We'll see if they pay out anything later on. And actually, I'm very surprised that neither of them uh, went for one of the Scuttle Crabs. Usually, uh, to me, especially on your first clear, Scuttle Crab is a very big part um, of your early jungling path. But very clearly, since Meteos left his Krugs up, that Maokai Kha'Zix combo is an option, as that will be the area that you go hesitate toward on this map. And, you know, maybe they will be cautious because face checking a bush with an Elise in it is the very dangerous early game pattern that yep. uh, she really does rely upon. And that's one where she can outduel a Kha'Zix if you get hit by the cocoon into an easy combo. It's one of those few situations where she'll take you out. Yep, and I don't think they have any idea where Lyra actually is. No one should have seen the Scryer's Bloom be hit or the explosion afterwards. So. Now they know that someone's up in the top side, but they could just think that that was Ninja because they saw Ninja leave lane, but they still haven't quite seen Lyra. Mm -hmm. So far, nothing picked up though. And level four and a half Elise has cleared the exact same camps, except an extra Scuttlecraft that Medios has, finds him in the jungle, lands the stun, triggers Thunder Lords, and has a 300 health lead. Now, usually you'll see the second half of the Elise combo completed where you go into spider form for execution damage. And since the first half of the combo does so much damage, you get uh, a decent amount out of that Q. However, Midas was so deep in his own jungle that Ryu would be able to get there first. And mid laners, more power in those little jungle skirmishes early on than the uh, junglers do. So just goes for the safe chunk on the Midas and then tries to kill the Raptors. But man, Ryu is actually getting punished heavily under his turret. And that might dissuade Midos from going for this little skirmish. Ooh, nice route onto Arrow. A lot of damage there. He's got to pop the heal. Still nearly loses his life for that one. Actually, yeah, plenty of punishment there. No one pulling aggro. And really nice trade for the Envy duo lane. Yeah, Varus is stronger in lane phase uh, here, even though the Misfortune is picked up in counter to Zyra. Um, one thing that so many of the pros have been talking about, oh, yeah, I love all these without gated carries, but... Uh, you know, Jin does have a bit weaker of a uh, laning phase than, than the Varus and the other two. And so we do see a decent amount of this, but if it doesn't result in a kill, if it doesn't result in like a big CS loss, which it hasn't, zero CS loss, so um, it's not uh, not a very big deal. It's just that there's a little bit of extra pressure there, especially if the skill shots are landing, um, which they did nicely from Hako and Apollo there for a little bit of harassment. You do get start to sweat a little bit about, you know, maybe jungle dives or an Elise coming, which is actually a good jungler for diving. Yep, absolutely agree. Well, the way we set up the lane right now is minions slightly apart, pretty much the same, but Envy got to recall first. So they walk in a lane straight, a Dirk and a Longsword, and they get control over the lane. If they want a hard push, they can deny one or two minions this way. If they hope it becomes a freeze, that can help them as well. And it should be just control continually for this Envy duo lane. And Maybe half, the second half of the landing phase will go their way a bit farther. Mm -hmm. Overall right now, 400 gold lead for Team Envy overall as a squad. And it mostly seems to be Lyra actually, the fact that he's been out jungling Meteos farm-wise and taking away some of the Raptors and probably a bit more money printed from Hakubo with the Spell Thieves. Actually, that's pretty close, but you can see here where the major differences are. It's mostly in the jungle, 300 gold there. And Meteos getting back out onto the field about the same time as well. So Lear should be able to hold on to that very slightly. The biggest difference now is that the Shen with the Stand United is ready, and both top laners use their teleports to get back to lane already. So if there is a play, you know, cross-map play, Envy do have the advantage on the bottom or even mid-side of the map. And if you're a jungler in this situation, if you're Lyra, uh, I usually try and just go force away from the Shen uh, and tell the Shen to play safe. But there are two schools of thought because you expect your opponents to attack the Shen and go to the source of the global because they don't want to fight elsewhere. So there's also a possibility of setting up counter ganks on that side. It's just a matter of knowing the personality of the jungler you're playing against, um, whether they're more likely uh, to actually go attack the Shen, or Whoa. if your bottom lane is getting pushed in like this, and we talk about the harassment when skill shots land. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really good by Hakuo. I mean, he's still playing a crap ton of Zyra. It's one of his best champions, and he's got the <laughs> He's got the skill shot accuracy. Those roots have, have heavily punished P1. Adrian 
takes a bad recall, and Arrow is either going to be 1v3 on a turret or has to take a recall as well and lose an entire wave. And that's the thing. It, w when you say bad recall, you're like, oh, it feels bad because you're going to miss out on minions. However, sometimes you have to take a bad recall or else you die. Or it's die. a bad first play. And then it's a, and then it's a worse a wor play. first play. Yeah. play. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we already played, you know, Elise, very... Yeah, might be the best uh, turret timing jump. I, I think probably literally the I'm best. I'm going to have to go with the best at the moment, so... Uh, definitely wise back off there, wow. and it's just going to result in a blue buff uh, steal. Maybe trade here. I'm, uh, didn't check blue back in. Blue spawn for a while. It actually. was the recall yeah. passed by Lyra, so I do like the desync there. Maybe he'll get back in time so that Meteos can't go for the trade. And I've got to wonder how much of that is actually pre-planned. Lyra saying, "I want to kill my blue late on purpose so I can steal and not have it counteracted." I think it's pretty reliable that you can get a advantage in the bottom lane here, and there they go. So you see landing, shaming an arrow. Not even a chance to do this one now. Up oh, there's the repel, the drop background. They're going to walk away because the turret is low and that'll die next wave. Pretty much perfectly executed tower dive. Adrian's got to hide again and looks like it'll be first blood and first turret for Envy. And this is, uh, you know, something that we talked about with Envy. They have, they have been able to accrue early game leads, even up towards 20 minutes, mid game as well. Um, it's just that later on they lose focus. Right now, they're hyper focused though. And I love how Lyra sticking to the game plan, sticking to their comp. They you know, have the pushing bottom lane, they're landing skill shots, so it's a weak uh, and easy turret dive for them to go with. Plus, they have the Shen, you know, basically carte blanche, right? Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want on the bottom side. If stuff goes wrong, Ninja will show up. Uh, yep. The Ninja, not uh, <laughs> necessarily the mid laner, but uh, they do get the first turret plus the kills. You know, first goal, uh, first blood, first turret, everything here on the bottom side. So, really good start for Team Envy. Uh, and we talked about, you know, the different forms of long range CC. Doesn't matter which one lands first, but there you go. They're able to easily chain them there, and there's nothing that Adrian can do to get out. Apollo set it up, and for the rest of there, it was all just completely. That's right. You give full free. credit to whoever lands the first CC. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody Apollo else. Apollo landed the Varus <laughs> ultimate. You deserve the kill. Sadly, the assist was only what you got, and Lyra took half the first blood turret gold. Really <laughs> unlucky. Apollo got robbed. Uh, honestly, though, this is looking very good for Envy, because what you want to do with this type of comp uh, is start chaining this early gold momentum that you have. Varus will peak very early with just building straight lethality. Uh, you group him up with the Elise in range form, with the Zyra to protect him, and the Azir post level six. This is a very, very potent siege comp. I like what P P1 are doing, trying to get something back for themselves, because they know uh, that wherever the Varus goes is going to be tough to deal with, and that is topside, but Meteos is going to be able to take this opportunity to store away this Infernal Drake for later in the game. Mm -hmm. If they can stall out this, this NV Snowball, then that will matter a lot. See this one right away. They go on to Apollo. Got a flash. He's got to block those shots. One missed, one blocked. And second one blocked as well. Apollo still burning out Seraph's ultimate and burning out both of his summoners. It's a good rotation by P1 to make that happen. And Maybe Seraph. The comeback comes through. Actually, all he gets is the save and then has to teleport back. Yeah, so burn slide here. As well. But there's no, there's no Infernal Dragon to kill anymore, so he'll probably get that cool knight back before it matters too much. But you see P1 desperately trying to match the lanes and not let Apollo and Hako out push them too early on. Nice little bit of damage. Mm -hmm. Get some counter push here as well. Envy are going to have to do some shuffling. Bring out the jungler to try and hold this one. Maokai now does have the teleport advantage, but because Seraph used his so early to try and get this lane shoving, it would definitely cost P1 if they really wanted to get a counter play going on the other side. Mm-hmm. TP advantage thing you have to worry about, absolutely. We know the Maokai can be insanely tanky with Courage the Colossus, and no one's really got the damage to kill him this early on. A bit of a more defensive opening for Ninja with the Negatron Cloak, so he'll take a while to scale up. Yeah, I mean, Ninja with a defensive opening, but Zig with a very offensive opening on Maokai. Second of the triple rings here. Yep. Uh, Meteos gets snared up! Oh, the knockup is there, but he's able to flash and leap away. Takes the exhaust as well, and yeah, not the worst trade of summoners. Yeah, I mean, there are wards deep in here on the Raptor camp, um, and they haven't been able to clear these out. I'd expect a control ward purchase here from Meteos immediately as a reaction. He does get one. Tried, right, um, tried. Right. But that, that's something as well that no longer can you rely on Raptor camp smites for clearing out that brush. Um, you'll see most teams get a lot early, a lot of early control wards in there just to protect against things like that after you know you've been invaded on the red quadrant. Um, currently, though, Envy still have a lot of deep vision. Almost all of Medios' camps are warded up. They even have one on the Wolves as well. 
Ninja gets a huge chunk. And he's got no ult, so it's real. Ooh. Oh, corrupting potion. Flash R, dodge the cocoon. Just barely Lyra still on the hunt. Not going to find anything to repel to and not go for it, but Ninja very nearly going down. Yeah, Ryu, super aggressive move there. He's lucky that Lyra missed that cocoon in his flash over. Yeah. I think, yeah, Lyra definitely needs to hit that because that would be a super big uh, aid in snowballing as Envy already had this gold lead and that would, you know, taking down uh, Ryu from the mid lane would really get the, the ball rolling once again so they can pick it back up. And we talk about getting the rest of these outer turrets for them. You know, they want to have that time to go reset, purchase, and then they can siege up uh, and start their Varus Arrow spam. Yep. Well, he's going to be trying it from the top lane right now. We're watching Meteos actually roam it to the top side as well. Phoenix One still suffering this 2,000 gold deficit, but again, they have that earlier Infernal Drake to buffer that a little. Uh, but it is Envy taking their almost expected early game lead and seeing if they can turn that into much more. It's been a weak season for them so far, but why are they not in the same bush? Uh, it's a bait. <laughs> uh, ah, behind bush number oh two. Oh my god, that did better. Nothing to do about that. Uh, All right, that's a good kill. <laughs> Adrian didn't need any extra range on his uh, his portion. Yeah, that's perfect. Why. Uh, they could have got a little extra damage, but there you go. It works out. They're able to get the surprise kill on top side and a little bit more damage on this turret. So once again, Phoenix, Phoenix one here do have a bit of extra pressure, but Envy call Lyra over just to clear out the minions. All right, let's see, Ryu going to run to the top side as well. And of course, this can be a 4v2. I like that usage of the Scryer's Bloom. Maybe could have aimed it towards the Gromp and had more information about Lyra, but Phoenix One, yeah, not really going for the dive of the turret, actually. Again, it would have been a 4v2, but they don't go for the pressure. They don't want to give away this mid lane wave that's crashing right now. And Meteos would rather find Ninja. Ooh. He's going to face check into him. Bam, there's half his HP knocked right back over. He would have to flash, but doesn't have it available from the earlier invade. But it gives Ryu a little bit of alone time on the mid turret. Super big chunk there, and that is actually going to give them the whole turret, I would think. Trying to, oh no, they, Ryu goes Pulling for the aggro. harassment instead. They don't focus the turret. He goes for harassment under yeah. turret range. Uh, you can't do that anymore while you're un, in the turret range with that preseason change, so they actually get pushed off of it. I think they, they should have been able to complete that objective, but uh, that's really good for Team Envy to be able to reset around this. Seraphine, is it just... Friendly trades of tanks in the bottom side. Yep. Zig getting a small but you know somewhat meaningful farm lead right now, actually. And considering that lane has been pretty much undisturbed for the entirety of the game, that's props to Zig for doing so well. I know uh, when the season started, Phoenix One was like, oh yeah, Ryu's really good, Arrow's really good, you know, Inor was pretty good before. Zig, though, he's kind of a dead weight, like he's gonna be the one Whoa, I have to carry. That's harsh. That, that was that was the preseason prognosis though, right? <laughs> like if you come into that roster, you're like, okay, well Zig's the one who's gotta fit in the backpack, but He's out laning Seraph a little bit right now, and I think he's largely been very good this year. Uh, and to be honest, better than expectation, and that's a good thing for him. Also, Maokai is going to be a huge part about uh, how Phoenix One utilized their advantages, right? We mentioned that they've, they've got this pocket Infernal Drake they're sitting on as the rest of their carries are building up extra offensive stats. Maokai is the one who creates for this team. Um, I mean, him going in under the Jin cover fire they force this team fight. He's the one that has to get to the back of this poke comp uh, and hold someone down so that the rest of the team are going to be able to get the kills stacking up. At the moment, though, all focus here is towards this top lane push. And uh, looks like Team Envy are holding them off. But Medios is waiting again in the brushes around top side, waiting for a very similar play. Yeah. Ryu package ends just now. It times out, gets nothing out of it. but. Maybe go to look for a roam mid, didn't decide to. Quick recalls out of the P1 duo as well. And they've got a brush and, or a ward in every single one of these brushes. Oh, Adrian, <laughs> no! You don't need to E the minion wave. That is terrible risk reward. Yo, Adrian, respect Projection. the arrow damage here. Apollo is the one who actually finds the snipe. And that was just a good snipe. I mean, nothing more you can say there. Free snipe onto Adrian. He's he's playing super risky. No respect for the damage. I guess he didn't think there were any arrows left in lane. His teammate recalled. Turns yeah. out Apollo still got one. Hey, I thought you were above the name. No, nope. I've decided to send back into darkness of the really easy ones that aren't funny. Let's transition into that, what this means for Envy as they now have control of the top lane. They've been up here shooting off the arrows for so long, and they finally are able to get a kill with them. 
And that snipe should reward yep. them with the turret finally, so they can turn their attention towards that mid lane yep. and really get the siege going. Phoenix One have two turrets they're like about to kill on the map. Top lane and mid lane outers are incredibly low. So it's gold they will eventually pick up as they push Ninja out of the lane and they'll get the gold a bit closer. And you can see that this 2,000 gold deficit is what they're at right now and it can get closer soon. Top push is still going, but Meteos looks like he wants to assassinate the Shen here. <laughs> Seraph will not be assassinated. Unlikely. But they're still getting pressure up on the top side. They saw everyone roam down to mid to get the outer turret, and as Lyra comes back in, his turret's already going to be at half HP. Yeah, should be a trade for the outer. I like the secondary trade right. for an outer turret trade here. I think Team Envy getting the uh, yeah. difficult to take turrets. Pretty happy with that one. And this is heartening for Team Envy fans, where they've just been able to, or been unable to capitalize off the first 10 minutes of the game. Now they're actually making good objective well, trades. And the thing is, they actually have decent stats up until 20 minutes okay. as well. It's actually later than so, it's, Yeah, game. mid game has typically gone okay for them as well. Thing is, Meteo stacking up another Drake, but that one in the pocket as well. Yep. So Phoenix One is just biding their time. See if Envy can actually complete this time. Well, Medios has been demoted. He was Cloud 9, now he's got Cloud 1. Picked it up for Phoenix, because uh, Phoenix won. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, <laughs> Ryu back in the middle. <laughs> Ryu back in the mid lane, starting up against Ninja. Really, these guys have been super low impact, uh, to be honest. Just, uh, you know, just kind of farming back and forth. And, 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 you know, we've had a couple of interesting rotations this game, and, you know, a couple of nice turret trades, but. The fact that Envy have really just forsaken bot lane entirely, right? they let Seraph lose his turret down there, they let two Drakes be taken away, I don't know if it's going to come back to bite them because the rest of the map's been winning and well, they're just kind of letting that part lose. The call for Envy right now for me is to get this 4-1 split going. They want to group up with their fun fully functioning Siege that's ready to go. You know, Zyra and Azir disengage with the uh, Elise and Varus poke. Uh, should have decent presser around a turret. Um, yes, you still have to worry about everything coming out from Phoenix One. You know, with Ryu, rocket spam, if one of the rockets hits, that can set up a Jin W. Um, and you do have to kind of keep these things in mind and still watch your positioning. But I think the advantage still is, would be over to the NV4 group if yeah. they did uh, group up like that. But uh, Air Ryu has been just defending his mid turret, just not letting any control of the minion wave go over to Ninja at any point. So uh, has not really been somewhere that Team Envy can focus on. Maybe now finally after they got bottom lane shoved out. Looks like they are turning their attention there. Meteos headed up to take a look at Seraph this time around. It should look pretty decent. There's no trip easily to run to, and suddenly Seraph's on the wrong side of this one. Trying to run to his way. here as Elise is coming up. Yeah, but the rest of P1 are coming in as well. They're not too far behind. Stun's gonna land immediately. He turns invisible, I believe, just in time to buy a bit more. Now can he leap away? That's on cooldown. Still heals up. Still running towards the brush. And this, they try to reveal him. He's oh, away. He's gonna loop. stay alive a little bit longer, but Lyra finally turns him around. Now how's the trade kill gonna go? Ryu dangerously injured. Zig chunked out of the front line. Has, he only has a flash out also, and that is a team fight win so far for Envy. As a parting shot comes through for Apollo. Oh! Oh, Arrow gets one back as well. Speaking of party shots. I can do that too. Arrow, nice deadly flourish, able to equalize the kills. And this game still teetering here because yeah. Phoenix won with the extra Drakes. Uh, actually feeling very good about the direction we're going. Look at this. Uh, so you're right, he does get the R activation just in time, but uh, that just delayed it a little bit. There still gets off the burst. This is the impressive part to me. Uh, right, lose the loop-de-loop, -loop, runs the opposite way you expect him to go because he's trying to juke you. Uh, they do end up getting him anyway, but he bought a little bit of time. And it's enough time for Arrow to land a bunch of Jin bolts onto Apollo, and then he follows it up here with the snipe. Barely. Hako does not, you know, backtrack a little bit to try and walk in front of it. That's kind of bodyguard. Kind of hard uh, reaction, I guess, to have, but uh, he could have probably saved Apollo there if he had done the stutter step. Yeah. Apollo was looking for it. He tried to run toward Taco. He's like, please, bro, take Man. this one for me. I'll and get you next time, I that, promise. But that's just every Zyre player in a nutshell, right? They just yeah, want to yeah. be the carry. He wants, he's like, if you're dead, I get the minions. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's all about me now. My KDA looks better than yours. And that's just that's every mage support ever. And then Ryu wanted to knock down this top lane outer. Not much of a trade in from Ninja on the mid side, actually. And looks like, yes, Ryu will actually equalize the turret score, so. 
keeping the game pretty close. 1300 only the deficit. He needs one half. Quad back in, and they still have those earlier drakes. Root onto Lyra. Hakko coming back in on this one, though. Take pretty tanky. Now the chase on a ninja. That's going to be a nice stun. Arrow. Arrow landing a lot of those shots and gets one finally. The bullets come through. Now the re-engage on towards Meteos. Rooted in place. Has nowhere Woo! to go. The CC lasts about seven decades. He Sta does get out of that one. Sanity Eye is available. Ryu's pressuring no. Seraph, but uh, they're making the call to try and help that turret and not use the Stan United to take the numbers advantage. He could have gotten away. I think Ryu, especially with this Trinity Force, would have melted through the turret. Interesting to debate whether that call uh, would be useful to actually go for that team fight. And if you think you can actually catch them if you stand united in mm -hmm. uh, and trade that for a turret, but they make the call to save it, uh, maybe for a later date where they don't have to give up, you know, a ton of turret pressure or something to a Trinity to force Corky that will probably take it down quickly. Yeah, they do have to react to this, and I want to see if Phoenix One keeps playing the split push style. Ryu, as you mentioned the stats in the pregame, he's always very aggressive, always push past the mid line. I feel like I see Ryu split push more than almost any other mid laner as well. That guy is constantly looking for the individual advantages and the individual map pressure, and standing up to Gorky is going to be hard. Again, he's a very good turret killer with that aforementioned Trinity Force. Hex Drinker makes him harder to kill by the Elise and the Azir that are most likely to square up against him at some point. And I feel like Ryu's in a very good place to take a lot of control over the mid game. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of early Hex Drinkers, especially when not only uh, the mid laner and jungler are AP, but you know there, there is AP as well on Varus and Chen. Plus, you have a mage support, so tremendous amounts of magic damage he's facing. And the value of the shield early on Hex Drinker is, is actually just insane for uh, the amount of gold it does cost. So. Yep. Definitely get a lot of bang for your buck on that early purchase. Speaking of bang for your buck, Ryu making me sad not getting Rocket Fire Cannon next. It's okay. I mean, it's also so good at killing turrets. Yeah. I really do think that, and, and there's some Cork players who do build that one after Triforce. I think it, over time, people will learn that's the better build, but. It also is decent when you're facing, you know, one of these NV comps that looks like they want to siege up and they have a lot of long range stuff, you know. Anytime you get them extra long range on your Trinity Force one shot, like that could that's a huge chunk of life out of one of these squishy range yeah. members. Right, because you get the Triforce Force attack on it as well. Like it's just six hundred damage from eight hundred range and turns out it's pretty meaningful, but Medios. Promoting himself, looking for a second Cloud Drake here in this game. And honestly, it's been three straight games of Medios solo taking a Drake and no one even trying to stop him. And I don't this feels like very strange. Lyra slowed down. Final shot does come through, but he's tanky enough to walk away. Has gone for a tankier build on this Elise. Dead Man's Plate helping. Ninja Tabby as well, but Ryu survives through the, uh, the chains from Apollo. And Phoenix One is getting closer and closer in this game. Gold deficit now below 1,000. And again, yeah. triple Drakes. It is that worrying trend for Envy as you get closer and closer to that 30 minutes. Start giving up more and more. You know, not using the early snowball uh, to really push themselves past uh, the maybe three quarters way of the map, and mm -hmm. Phoenix One are really gaining control in PVE style here. Uh, as you mentioned, Video is continually soloing out the Drakes, as well as uh, the Fan of Wards now. Got pretty much the full river lit up, and they'll be able to see Envy as they start to get a little worried about the Baron area. It's worth pointing out the Goldie right now for Team Envy. The 12 on a gold lead is almost exactly just Lyra's advantage over Meteos. That's basically where the advantage lies. But that, Meteos has been effective without the gold. And got the three drakes. Yeah, exactly. Can't really and, complain. and that doesn't mean much. It's a little bit of extra health on, a, on an Elise. So the, the Elise He's got a giant spell. Ooh. The Elise is a little bit more tanky now. Um, that's not going to really change a team fight. Whereas Arrow. going to come in as well. Ulti's up in about 20 seconds for Arrow, and he can maybe get a bit more done with that one. But Apollo lost his summoner heal off of the aggressive plays out of both Ryu and Adrian. So uh, they are losing some map control. Next Drake up's going to be mounted. It'll be the last of the uh, elemental Drakes this game. Nice little play. Adrian gets rid of one of the blast cones inside of the Envy jungle. Doesn't need it, just wants to get rid of some of the options. Mm -hmm. Worth doing that in your own games, by the way. Medius handed a blue buff before he didn't want it. Never feels bad to get that kind of stuff. Edge of Night, of course, in the build. And we'll see if Medios goes more damage or more tanky. I think they really only need frontline at this point, but really up to him. Yeah, I mean, he can go more Bruiser. As of right now, you feel super confident just with the Edge of Night shield and even reduced uh, CC duration after that due to his Merc Treads. 
Um, but I am a super big fan of Black Cleaver on Kha'Zix. Yeah. Uh, adds a lot, you know, the best of both worlds. Plus, the extra cooldown reduction is mm -hmm. is oh, huge for him. Uh, and the thing is, like we mentioned before, the, the full tank Elise here, the team fight presence is way lower. Even though he may be up in gold, team fight presence here from the Kha'Zix, being yeah. able to chunk one of these squishy backline members out is giant. Whereas Elise, she's going to have to shine through picking somebody off with this high move speed dead man's play. You know, getting a cocoon pick on somebody could have a big influence there if they're able to... You know, land one of those. Yeah, but you're right. I would rather just take the slightly poorer Meteos Kha'Zix than the slightly richer release just in a late game team fight. So, uh, you know, we'll see if it means much here for Team Envy as they're trying to hold on to their lead, but it's been being chipped away at for the last 20 minutes straight. As well, Black Cleaver completed here on the support misfortune, mm. which is giant. Level 11 plus Black Cleaver. This is a great spike for Adrian. If he can position well enough to get you know, a couple members in that misfortune ultimate, that almost instantly shreds. The, the damage applications come through so quickly yeah. that uh, that sets up your double lethality users to just go wild here in the yeah. Kha'Zix and Jin. Well, I mean, for some armor shred scales positively with lethality, it, it makes the build even better than it already was in this and kind of sense. And here they squishies. go, circling in a little bit. And look at that, Adrian cutting back and forth. Mid lane outer does go down, and Envy have got the pressure lead back. But, of course, trade it up, and it's a better trade. Phoenix 1 gets top lane tier 2 for mid lane outer. It's a better turret to kill, and, well, Phoenix 1 getting more gold out of the trade. Gold now within 300 here. And it's unfortunately the same story it always was, where Team Envy looked good for the first 20, and then... Well, they never got any trait control and started to finish her off. Yep. Unlucky. The extra movement speed along with the deep vision that Phoenix One has should be able to set him up. Nice juke away by Ninja. Takes two shots, gets out. Now here comes the push towards the front. Lyra takes a shield. Is very durable. Will there be a team fight? Teleport coming in for Zig. Does he want it? Does he cancel? He's going to stay with the team. Let's make sure they don't get re-engaged upon. Question is, where can the teams go from here? There's a new mini wave in the mid lane. Envy can walk up that one, and there's some decent poke on P1. Maybe they get some turret damage out of it, but they would rather play into the jungle. Yeah. And they get to reset. They still have to be worried because, well, you know, not only the gold has been equalizing for Phoenix One, but also the vision coverage. Oh, oh, he's still dead to leap. Oh, he gets the wave uh, for a little <laughs> bit. We'll just give him a crack. Juke. Fix that with a and flash. There we go. Got him with a flash. All right, trade of summoners. Mito's gets a solo kill. His first kill of the game, his first kill on Phoenix Ooh, 1. Happy. And now wants into Apollo as well, <laughs> but rooted in the turret maybe a bit more than he wanted. Someone heal arrow comes in too late, and I don't think it would have meant anything anyway. One for one, missing a jungler may be unfortunate, but he pressed down the mid-constructed turret. And look for a bit more. All right, Seraph does not have Stand United, but he does have Teleport. He's going to come in on the front lines and stop their losses at just an Azir turret going down. The one for one trade. Not too bad for Team Envy. But as I was saying before that, the vision that Phoenix won, the vision advantage, is more important to me than even you know the small gold difference that they, they've been catching up here as that was one of the things that set up this play where Medios had this brush control, was able to get off this surprise play until he went for a turret dive. Yeah. Um, and those types of things can, can, can add up. And these are the critiques that people have been having of the mid game of Team Envy. And, why they haven't been able to really snowball off of the early leads that uh, in the games that they have gotten. Well, we'll see if they can fix any of that in this game or in the ones in the future, of course. No matter how this game goes, we will have at least one more. Of course, best of threes here. And at the end of the day, the match result matters. And if you take the learnings off your first game and you turn it around, then you're going to be fine. That said, still practically a tied game here. Of course, vision control is still important. Phoenix is going to go ahead and grab their fourth straight elemental Drake and. I don't even know if Envy have actually seen a Drake this game. It feels like they don't care oh. about him. No, Guard look at Baron fly. here. This is super risky, though. 8,000 health Baron. There's no way you get through it. You have to turn. Not just yeah, but they are trying to find the turn. They're not going to find a Zig. Ulti just not going to get popped, but he's down to half HP. Can they get much more? Bullet time juked pretty well. Yeah. We are still tanky. As Zig gets a big shield, pops the Ulti. Ninja at half. They're able even, to cut away. Even with Phoenix One missing a lot of the big ults from you know Arrow and Adrian not not getting a lot of damage out of either of those, they still stop the Baron. They're able to disengage in time. And it just goes to show how comfortable I think they're feeling right now, as far as their team fight goes, because they didn't even really land any high impact abilities there. 
and are easily able to get this Mountain Drake without giving up any territory. All right, and now it's only going to be Elders, but at this point, Phoenix One have the objective Drakes, though. Mountain plus Double Cloud, they can get to any objective and kill it pretty quickly. They definitely have a lot of control of this game. There's, there's only two outer turrets left standing here. Secondary turrets for Team Envy. Um, they don't have a whole bunch of defensive vision. And once this locket gets completed on Maokai that Zig is building, their team fight just goes insane. He's already incredibly tanky on the front line. Uh, he's going to be a level 18 locket activation, by the way. So the maximum shield right, out of yeah. that thing, which scales very nicely with the levels. And they're actually just going to use it to here. tank up the Baron and force a fight. They're well, forcing out the Shen. Shen's far away. He should have ulti available. So we'll see if the fight can actually start here and go well for Team Envy. Looking for the spot. Burning it! Oh, the Baron! And it's going to be picked up by Meteos. He lands the spite. Lear didn't hit it in time. How about the kills? Well, Meteos has gone down. One for zero Envy. Looking for Zig in the front line, does have Flash, not gonna pop it yet, wants to bait him through, jumps in, and the re-engage comes through, but oh. he just died. Two for one, three for one so far. Zig's gotta run, arrow the other one alive here, and that's a team fight victory for Envy. They've gotta make something work off of this Baron take, though. Yeah, I mean, I thought Phoenix One were gonna fully disengage after that and just sacrifice Meteos uh, and give him up there, but they stick around, give over a couple extra kills. Ryu goes into the pit to trade lies with the Azir, and Adrian gets sniped as well, so, even though Baron going over and he just lands the panic smite right there. Uh, I believe it was the smite. Maybe Q also was able to aid him in it. But even with landing that, uh, Team Envy are pretty happy about getting a couple kills. It's still definitely an advantage oh. for Phoenix One, but it could have been bigger. This could be scary. Repels into the air and suddenly Arrow can no longer tank a bunch of Zyra plants. So I think it's a trade of ultimates. Not the worst thing in the world. But really, Envy off of the 4-1 to, to one cheap fight only get a couple of mini so, waves and a reset. Yeah, let's take another look. because We've talked to me this for years, and he absolutely hates going for smites like this, where the enemy team's half inside the Baron pit. You have to you know, panic smite it, like, expect a lot of damage. He does not like going for those. So I don't know what the comms were like in this uh, Phoenix 1 little Baron here, but they also, after even winning that uh, smite fights, yeah, <laughs> go in for the, the trade there inside the Baron yeah. pit and kind of opt in that one. Regardless, they still have Baron buffs left on two members, so they can use this to push. Still, uh, I would say, an advantage for them if they're able to get decent usage out of this Baron buff and push up, but not the, uh, not the ideal scenario they were hoping for when they started that play. Medios at the moment getting a little bit behind the, the squad here, too, as he's uh, flanking. On the Kha'Zix, does have GA for himself as well. Lear is tanky though, he's not going to be a great target. Still wants to go into on Apollo, actually lands the roof, but there's no follow-up just yet. He's going to be able to stay out of range. Vitos walks back as well, and Ninja is good enough at zoning the team away. And I kind of want to know how this back half of the game plays out. Phoenix One, of course, still with two Baron buffs, could get some pressure in, but I feel like Envy finally getting a, a team fight win for the first time in a while maybe resets them a bit and they can start playing the map properly again. We'll see Elder Dragon up in two minutes. Baron should time up before then. About a minute difference. As your turret number two is die, but that doesn't really mean too much. See, Phoenix One can siege mid tier two, but sieging against Azir very difficult. His reach is great. And nothing much to be gained here. Yeah, Phoenix One can regroup after this, get the minion wave shoving again. Maokai does have teleport. He's ready to team fight over and over and over. That's all Zig really wants at this moment, so. Keep your eyes out for these deeper wards from Phoenix One. There's a couple in the jungle right now. Um, as they're trying to control the waves, there are two sides where Zig could teleport to flank in from. And if he comes in from the backside, you know, Midas is also trying to find his way into these brushes. Mm -hmm. Even though they have the Zyra and the Azir that we talked about for counter engage, if the Maokai's coming from one angle, the rest of the squad's from the other, it makes it really difficult. Uh, so you can't really allow yourself to get pinched with this kind of squishy backline, and that's what Phoenix One are looking to do. Right, we'll see if they can pinch that squishy backline after all. Seraph, of course, will need to play the split push game himself. Titanic Hydra and a Sunfire Cape, about as good as that's going to get for minion killing, and has once again grown his minion lead over Zig, so that's flipped a bit. Still want to see if Zerat Portal comes through. I think it's great on Shen. We'll see if he does it. But maybe Envy can split push the rate of victory if those engagements ever do come through. Right now, Phoenix One just sharing amongst their three marksmen all the farm in the mid lane. 
Black Cleaver into interestingly Edge of Night, not Executioner's Calling coming out from Adrian. Oftentimes you do see the last one for upgrades come through for support misfortune. Something is wrong, Freak, when the supports are building lethality. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Miss Fortune is barely a support. <laughs> I like, she's a conventional marksman who has to build a sight still. This is a fair point, but... Oh, Ryu gets oh, tied! They Ryu's got the pick they so. want! Oh, he played way too up. They did not right. have vision control. Right in time for an objective. This turns the entire table for Team Envy here. They just want to pressure super hard now. They have this huge advantage. That's the mid laner out. They should be able to get at least some gold in. Whoa, look for the top flash on Amidos. Amidos had having to flash over the wall to get himself away, and he will clean out, but again, caught on the wrong side. I guess he buys a few seconds with it, and this turret won't die on this wave, but Envy clearly saying we'd rather kill this turret than go for the Elder Dragon. Backdoor bonus is on. They can still work their way through it. Looks like the tanks are durable enough. And yeah, through the uh, one-third damage reduction, doesn't even matter. And Envy actually able to grow their lead for the first time in 20 minutes. And they should be able to set up some wards, some very important wards here around the Elder Dragon, because even though uh, they didn't rush for it, 15 seconds here on Ryu, if there's not a package in base, they can still try and force a 5v4. I don't think there is a package. I think it's going to be a slow road in. They get the exhaust and the arrow. Here's a shuttle to try to catch him out. The flash to follow Seraph is not quite in range. He's going to knock back Zik, keep him out of the fight for now. Agent runs Ooh. fastly to the left-hand side. And they stopped the Elder Dragon. I feel like Adrian got lucky that they didn't turn here when the Seraph used his ultimate on the front line with uh, Ninja. They didn't turn around and try to cut off Adrian. Said they tried to chase down Arrow. Uh, they did get a bunch of summoners out, though. Arrow and Adrian, both flashes, plus the heal down. So Team Envy, huge swing off of that early pick on the, or the earlier pick on Ryu in the mid lane. Yeah, that was two to four in summoners, I'm pretty sure. Pretty, pretty big there. Some were down from earlier. Now you can see maybe the re-engage towards the Elder of Force. It means much more for Phoenix One. Not only do they kill it faster, but the buff is better for them as well. So you've got a weird lopsided I believe, engage. didn't they take out the killing it faster part for... Well, they kill it faster because of an uh, mount oh, they're just stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it, it is, in a general sense, that's easy to kill, but P1 has a, a mountain and an infernal to help kill the kind. True uh, But enough. yeah, it's, it's going to be, what, two and a half times as powerful? All right, well... They also have another option of 40 seconds diverting uh, vision control over to Baron. There's another viable sight. That scuttle crab also pretty important. Let's see if anyone heads over because it's pretty free to take at the moment. Let's see if they can get it. P1 still kind of waiting around and now. Package going to be 45 seconds remaining, so they probably can get that during the next team fight. Looks like Phoenix One happy to play as. It's interesting. P1, I think, would be okay to trade Elder Dragon for Baron Nasher, and it would be reasonable for them because it's a four stack Elder, and that's decent. That said, if they feel like they have pressure, maybe they want to get both. It is. It is. In, yeah, it is interesting because ideal scenario, of course, you want to get both, but They're how? Okay, gold. How much does Envy? Getting a Baron buff in trade, if theoretically they were able to trade it for the Elder Dragon, um, it does help out a lot with Siege defense, considering they also have so much wave clear with all this long range poke uh, and Baron uh, uh, minions. The question then becomes to me do Phoenix One want to make the call to go for a turret dive if they were able to secure an Elder Dragon? Is that extra damage enough for them to say, hey, Zig, you're the tankiest that a Maokai can be almost? You're almost in. Incredibly full build here. Yep. And and just pull the trigger. At the moment, though, Meteos is trying to solo another one. This one's quite a bit bigger and dealing yeah. some damage to him. <laughs> Hurts him a bit, but he's doing okay so far. Envy wanting to engage for this one. Big very far, but look at that teleport. He could go into the mid lane right behind him. Okay, right now it's just uh, minion and ward clears, and the dragon's going to reset. Actually right. traded Scuttle Crab right there as well. Yeah, and you get Scuttle, which is actually pretty nice. No sneaks allowed for a full minute, but of course, P1 getting the top Scuttle about 40 seconds ago means they can know all about Baron sneaks. Lyra with the Sweeper, make sure that otherwise it's pretty much dark in this pit. So when Scuttle despawns in 10 seconds, that area is dark, P1. There's like one in the top brush and one like in the jungle, but as far as actual Baron sneaks, you need to put real wards down. When I correct myself from earlier, I believe the Elder Dragon would be five times as powerful for P1. So lots of true damage would come through if they managed to grab that. It means uh, any of the Jin or Corky Poke would be super painful. And it would be almost nothing for Envy. On a comparable scale. Full armor pen build through for Arrow. Three lethality items plus the Mortal Reminder. 
And uh, we'll see if he goes for an Infinity Edge or Rapid Fire Cannon last to add some attack damage power. And here we go. The push is on. P1 did not really have wards from before, and the last few got swept out. Ziggs basing. There's the teleport. He's coming in, but it's at 4,000. 4K HP. Here comes the general. Here comes the TP flank as well. Zig, who's he going to find? Doesn't look for Sarah. Doesn't look for Ninja just yet. Here's the taunt that in, but that makes uh, Maokai is very, very tanky. Starting to get burned down. Garden Angel is available. Bullet time only really hits Sarah, but Chunks him a bit injured, and that's GA down. Lots of roots come through. Midios caught up from the ult. He's going to get burst to that with this one. Garden Angel dropped. They were getting the shield. Can they kill him in time? And no, oh, yes. Oh, they're all the, coming back up. <laughs> bit of a one for one. Guardian Angel for a kill. The snipe almost landed. I think Apollo actually flashed after he let go of the Q, so mechanical misplay there. Oops. I, I think that both Meteos and Lyra's GAs were also popped in addition yes. to the two tanks. Yes. So we got a bunch of those out of the way. Seraph doesn't even have one, so we just never got Teleport that back here for Seraph, though. They're going to continue to force it. Can Meteos go for a steal? And it's a 5v4, and Seraph could actually turn into a fight if he wanted to. Misses the taunt onto air, gets a slow, though. Look if you have to get off the kill onto Jin. Exhaust on to buy some time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Turning one around, but that's going to be Baron Nash at 2k HP. Oh! He can't quite get it, though. This time secured by Lyra, but Envy now have all the tools they need to really push this game open. 4v3 on the map plus a Baron. Huge wave top. Phoenix one should Oh, oh Aaron got another one! Arrow oh. trying desperately to keep his team in the game. Next thing that they should rush to is clear out that big minion wave on top. They don't want to let Envy go buff up that wave with Baron buffs, because uh, that would be a huge push for them. The problem is, that drives you away from the Elder Dragon, which is also an area that Team Envy want to set up for Vision, because that might be the next site of the uh, fight here. But here's the Mist of Seraph. Doesn't matter a tremendous amount. Meteos goes for the assassination of Hawkroll, but uh, Baron will get picked up in the end. Even though he does get in here for the attempt. 900. Oh, man. He that was almost got it. Yeah. Well, Lyra seemed to combine his damage pretty cleanly. There wasn't a lot of time to land that spite in between the bursts. So, and then, of course, that was really nice. Yeah. When combining your damage, you usually want to get your spell animation going first. Q, yeah. then smite, because your smite is very obviously instant. And uh, almost, almost all of the spells, yeah will have at least some animation. So mm -hmm. be careful comboing, smiting first, then using the ability, because that's where most of those steals come from, and then get flamed for, oh, your Kha'Zix with isolation damage. How come yeah. you didn't? It's, it's really interesting to kind of think about on a very micro level. We'll talk about that afterwards, because there's a fight for Elder Dragon coming up. And here we 5, go. 5,000 gold apart, Baron buff on three of Team Envy. So let's quickly review the problem that Phoenix One had in their last team fight, though. It was Zig teleporting in and going in, but no damage near them. So Team Envy got a good second of pure DPS on Zig, which even though Maokai in stand up 1v1 with Shen is a bit more tanky, uh, there's no DPS on the Shen. So they got a huge lead in far, as far as tank health went. And so when they're racing through the Guardian Angels and the two health bars of the different tanks, there was a very big early lead uh, where Envy got DPS time onto Zig with no return DPS. A lot of that was due to Hakuo zoning with the Zyra, and maybe a bit too much respect from Phoenix One in that respect, but either way, that was the desync in that team fight, and Phoenix One need to be in there at the same time if they want the next one to go a different way. Well, let's see what comes in next on this one. Seraph happy to tank Rockus. doesn't even take damage for this. And it's NBCG with the Baron buff. How much can they grab? They don't want to fight for Elder Dragon. It's a desynced objective. Instead, it's Mid lane inhibitor turret to take some damage. Apollo has a red buff, applies the debuff. Now comes in. the re-engage. Lyra taking a lot from the bullet time. You can see Fairbank coming out of the misfortune. Ryu chunked out to one third though. And out go the tanks. Medios knows better than to really dive into this one and won't find much more, but that is a reprieve gain for Phoenix One. Yeah, so this time around, Phoenix One were able to gain the health advantage on tanks, but Apollo sniping the back line took out a lot of the confidence of Ryu uh, taking some health down, as well as Medio. So taking a lot of the threat out, and here they go. Looking for the play. It's going to be actually pretty outplayed by uh, P1. They get away from most of the knockbacks, but now Zig locked up at the front line. Too much damage coming through. Azir does a million and a half, and Seraph somehow gets killed on his uh, lane opponent. Seraph's holding the front line, and Phoenix 1 can't get anything done. The front line too beefy. The ninja really putting through a lot of the damage in the team fights here. Full build Azir, able to get in there for the play as well. And he's got the confidence of the Zonias plus the extra health. So Envy patching up some of their late game stuff. Back to back team fight victories. Another objective for themselves. They still haven't gone inside the inhibitor turrets, but this is looking so much better than almost all 
of the late games of most of their games so far that split. Yeah. They're still on course. And I gotta say, it's it's heartening to see we're here in week five for the halfway point of the split, and teams starting to turn their seasons around when they look bad before. You can yeah. see really nice mechanics to, to dodge away from the CC there, but at a certain point, you can still kill Zig. Yeah, good, good, you know, twisted advance to dodge the uh, Azir wall, but then he doesn't immediately flash, doesn't respect Seraph, doesn't think Seraph's gonna land this taunt on him. So you can't taunt, or you can't flash after the taunt because all the damage is done and he dies anyway. Yeah. And now he doesn't have flash as well. If you make that play, you twist advance and you avoid it, you need to get out of there immediately. Use your flash early to gain that distance. And uh, that's what cost him his death there. Plus now he doesn't have that extra tool for engagements. Mm -hmm. No flash on the Maokai. Yep, that's a mistake. If you're willing to flash, do it before you take all your damage. And Unfortunately, not the play he made there. So 7,000 gold lead, Elder Dragon up onto five, and Team Envy looking to finally crack the inhibitor wall. They got the early game lead. They let it slip for a little while, but they finally came back in the end game. And we're going to keep that going. Six out of turrets all gone now. Yeah, and that game plan we keep talking about with the siege for, for this squad is what they're finally returning to here. And they're able to finally push this up to the inhibitor turrets. This mid inhibitor turret is so low. They just want to get in there and touch it, but here comes the A, all in for Phoenix One. Looking to get some kills off Exhaust onto Lyra, the two tanks, one rooted up now as well by Zig, and they finally got through the Guardian Angel for the second time now. Ninja is in the mix though, does plenty of damage, and no one can quite get back on a Lyra. Maybe it's gonna be the curtain call for it. They almost fail to block, but they're gonna get the rest of the shots out of the way, and actually misses two of the shots anyway, so not too bad. Ryu, forced to cut away from the Hakuho Stranglethorns, actually. Has a bit more time, and look at this, Envy right away going back into the bot side of the map. Deadly Flourish buys a little bit, they see Hakuo on the side, Zig does he want in, the answer is no. And a quick TP. For the flank. Seraph has rejoined the fight though, full HP on the Shen. And Meteos, even though he has a Guardian Angel, is not in a spot to really dive into the team, so Whew. it's an inhibitor turret take, and you know, a decent enough battle for Team Envy yet again. <sighs> Slowly but surely, they're chipping away. Problem is, that Phoenix One do have the power to win one of these team fights. And we're getting late enough in the game where one of the team fights is exactly what matters. You can run it all the way back down. 50 minutes in, pretty much everybody is full build here, changing out slots for where's my control ward slot. The, the supports are keeping around one empty one to stack up mm -hmm. as many as they can of those as well. Three scrying orbs actually for Team Envy uh, to try and help them in those situations around Baron where they haven't had time to set up pre uh, beforehand, so they can do it reactively a little bit. Yeah. If we talk about full builds, though, I I really like the Hakuo has gone for Void Leandries. Obviously, it's a lot of damage onto him, but I really wish Adrian, instead of going for more lethality, had gone for Last Whisper. Because he's only bullet timing the tanks. He's bullet timing 200 bonus armor tanks and 15 lethality from an Edge of Night. It's very different from 35% armor pen from a Last Whisper. I feel like he'd have more effectiveness with uh, an anti-tank focus build slightly more, but nitpicky. It's not going to be the reason they win or lose the game, really. All right. I'll uh, remember that to see if Adrian gets off some amazing if you want time ninja, on the back I take line. it back. <laughs> if he one-shots Ninja, I take it all back. But And hey, if that happens, then good for him, right? Like, if he gets the shot, then that's cool. Adrian, face tanks a piercing air. Meteos taunted up by Seraph, has Garden Angel. Jumps away, though, and the re-engage comes through onto Shen. Bit of damage on Apollo, just engaged, have to run away now from Haku. Hope can't quite land the root, but still plenty of damage coming through. Now the current call, let's get out of the front line. Seraph taking some shots. Ninja as well, trying to thread the needle and hit him in the Ooh. backside. Package getting Ryu away, nearly died. Super low health bars on Phoenix One, a couple of low ones on Team Envy as well, but still feels like advantage. Blue team, 8,000 gold up, and map control remains. Ah, too much tank, not enough damage. <laughs> we keep having these disengaged uh, team fights. Baron still is going to be the site for uh, confrontation here. Uh, the inside track on wards, currently Envy controlled, but that's actually not bad for Phoenix One. They are red side. Red side actually really uh, advantage in these situations where they can throw this extra shot over the back mm -hmm. of the Baron pit, and they, they can, if they can push up, also force Envy into the small corridor, so yeah. You're right, it's it's harder to, to choke red side out of the Baron Pit, and we know these jungles have gone one and one so far in smite battles. Both have managed to secure no steals, yeah. but they've both been in range twice on Baron. And objectives like it. Let's see if Meteos can make the all-star play in his Phoenix One debut. He's had an okay game, but I feel like has been largely outjungled by Lyra. I mean, if you focus on the PvE aspect, he had a heavy focus on 
the Drake. He also yeah. did get a couple of those wraparound ganks on top side. Um, so, you know, definitely some influence for both of them. Uh, as of right now, if he gets this Baron sneaky, then that would be a game-changing play. The rest of the team, of course, showing on mid lane. Maybe they don't think of it, but you can see them walking over. Lyra's like, wait a second, they're on this. Adrian Chunk down a half as well from the poke. He's got to respect piercing arrow from Apollo. And oh. he barely gives him it. Is it getting caught up on the outside? I don't know if they want to all in on it, though. He's getting chunked down. Half health. Yeah, he's already used locker for the seat. This, wow, actually blocked up by an Azir soldier? I didn't know that even existed, but he couldn't run away, and I'm pretty sure that was from Arise. Today I learned, I guess. Um, but Vig's going to have to recall and TP back into this, maybe. As Worth Sarah's it. Split pushing in the bot lane pretty nicely. Inhibitor there goes we down. Go. First inhibitor of the game. Team MVP get that. Now they're onto the Baron yet again. They know they've got the map pressure. They can force a TP out of Zig. You're going to see both top laners showing up. Now Hako hit by the Deadly Flourish. Here comes oh, the Attested Steel, steel. Meteo. They do have wards. Zig's in the front line. Taunt not going to land. He's going to get to the uh, root, though. Careful, it's the front line. A Baron's gonna regen. The minions are gonna kill a Nexus turret if left unattended. So Envy don't have to force that Baron. I like to call it a back off and just call Phoenix One Bluff here because mm -hmm. the minions are doing a lot of work for them inside the base and they can just return to this. And not only that, they have an inherent TP advantage. If you trade 700 TP for 700 TP, Seraph can still stand united in and now Zig has to walk. And as we all know, trees don't move very fast, so it's gonna be hard for them to show up in time. And it's, there are some subtle things that, that lead us for Team Envy right now. Retaining this 8,000 gold lead, which, okay, at this point we can ignore because the builds are full. But at this point, I feel like they are winning on the map and they have the tools to close this out. Now it's more about, ooh, who has their Guardian Angel passives ready? Who has uh, the extra control ward down before the fight starts to set up the pick? And currently, all four Guardian Angels active, so we may have another scenario where we're burning through the front line trying to just race through tank health yep. uh, and get to the earlier activations of those. Phoenix One have actually managed to add a bit more tank killing to their lineup, though. Both mm -hmm. of their uh, actual farming marksmen had 50% crit with Infinity Edge in their build, so, exactly. so autos do matter quite a bit now. I, I really do uh, encourage the late-game transfer of these lethality builds, which are super insane for early and mid-game, yeah. over to the crit multipliers when we do get to these 50-minute-plus games. Four of those guys. 600 damage crits on Super Minions out of Corky, but here we go. Once again, the attempt on to Baron Nasher. Ryu is... Good shots here from Apollo yeah. again, finding Adrian. They were getting a little bit as well. Zig this time can actually kind of work through it. Minions again, back at work inside the Phoenix One base. Yep. Ryu kind of has to go back and forth, try to take those things out. Mid lane, outer turret version three taken down this time. Once again, on the Baron, they're just Envy inviting Phoenix One to misplay here. Looking for the opportunities to poke, looking for the damage output. Maybe this time it happens. 4,000 health on the Baron. They've got to go for the seal pretty soon. Looking in. Whoa! He's going to rejected! Get it. Meteos actually gets the return trip thanks to Ninja. And the first kill comes through anyway. This could be the fight. They want the crit. 1,900 oh. damage from Arrow. Oh. Takes down Akuho. Meteos taking it up. He's going to be fine. Guardian Angel popped off a of Seraph. And this could oh. be the fight that Phoenix One needed. They rise from the ashes. Are you kidding me with that? I want oh, to see that replay. No. They're going to chase out Apollo here, and this is probably going to be a push-in to end the game, but I got to see that replay again oh because my gosh. Ninja got the Azir wall rejecting Meteos, but I think he got close enough to land the smite. To land the smite and grab the Baron buff for them. So makes his way back onto the LCS stage. There you go. Made the game-winning play. <laughs> this is going to be all she wrote. I feel like the respawn timer is 30 seconds long. It might be enough for P1 to close it out in the 57th minute. 11 11 in kills, still down 3k in goal, but I don't think Lyra can 1v5 this one. This is going to be GG. Looks in for Meteos, not going to matter. Down goes the Spider, down go the Nexus turrets, and Phoenix 1 had to work really hard for it. But at the end of the day, they take down game one. And there's the man on your screen, Meteos. His first game on P1, officially part of the roster, steals the game winning Baron. <laughs> And after an hour, are you 100 percent sure he got the credit on killing the Baron? Yes, I'm 100 percent. Look it down. Had, it had to be Smite then. It was. <laughs> it was a Kha'Zix red square in the bottom right of the All screen, right. and it said, "Medios, you are full of swag still." Oh man, yeah, it took him a while to be able to do it, but you were able to 
Make it. Make this might when it counts. Whew. Yeah. And that's just game one, folks. So <laughs> both teams have to regroup after that game um, and come back to game number two because Envy, what they're going to want to talk about is pushing that that early snowball, right? Uh, yeah. may, being a little bit more aggressive, you got sieging up a little bit earlier to try and take advantage of these these arrows from Varus where Apollo was landing a lot of them onto the back line towards the end game and getting a lot of momentum. But uh, Phoenix won, stalled it out, and they won that game-winning Baron fight. All right, well, good job, the Meteos, for making it happen. Now let's hear from more about that game and toss it over to Dash and Zyrene. Thank you very much, gentlemen. A very back and forth first game here between Phoenix One and NV. Phoenix One coming out on top, though, with that clutch steal at the end. Before we get to that, we got to start all the way back at the beginning. Champion select here between these two teams looking a lot more standard than the prior series. Yeah, if you watch the previous set, you're going to be like, oh man, all these cool champions are coming out. Meta's looking different. Jarvan mid. It's like, no, things look <laughs> a little bit more contained here. This is kind of a little bit more of what we should be expecting on this patch. There's a little bit more, there's some diversity, right? But we're still seeing a lot of the same things, same picks like Kha'Zix, et cetera. Right, and we're seeing that a standard, or what we're calling a standard team composition for right now, still viable, right? You don't have to go to this like full dive-oriented damage composition. Glad it Things exists, like though. this, here we go. If we roll this out and go ahead and look at these picks real quick, we have the Maokai versus Shen matchup. So tank versus tank in the top lane. The Kha'Zix over for Meteos. So we're seeing him on an assassin-like champion. You know, he's not playing the Zach and the, the tanks, so yeah. it's good on him for being able to, to f slip into this meta. Yeah, it's one of the champions that, you know, he has played in the past that I've seen him play pretty much like last year as well. I think he also had some Kha'Zix at one point. Right. Um, but then, you know, it wasn't really known for it. Was, has played it in solo queue a bunch too. So, you know, this is just kind of standard, like we we're saying, tank top laner. You have an aggressive jungler. You have a support that's going to deal a decent amount of damage. And then you also have a mid laner that's just going to wave clear. So overall, this is kind of what you expect in the draft phase. Great. Let's get in the game. 33 minutes in, we're around the Baron, one of many Barons here in this game. Let's take a look, because Phoenix won, able to secure it, but maybe some miscommunication around what to do after. Yeah. What are we doing afterwards, guys? Uh, Zig has flash, and then Meteos dies, sure. But Zig just takes so long to figure out what they're going to do. Okay, I have him up against the wall. Bullet time comes out. Not effective there. Adrian ends up dying. Ryu jumps in. Doesn't use exhaust. Well, the Shen also used the dodge zone, so he's not getting auto attacks in at that point. And that's a, that's where you lost Adrian. Zig had to blow his flash afterwards. You lost Meteos, and you lost Ryu. That yep. could have been a fight where you just lose Meteos. Ryu didn't have to go in. Adrian didn't have to stand there and hold his ground. So you ended up losing two more people than you had to. Yeah, Meteos on your screens right now. As you mentioned, losing two more than they needed to, meaning only two remaining members had that Baron buff. Of course, they lose pressure and time on the map while those respawn timers are counting down. So definitely something that could have been cleaner for this Phoenix One squad. I want to push us forward to the next one here. The big Baron play, 53 30 into the game, Medios with a this, big steal. I think he jumps in, and then he gets knocked out here. So it's a leap, woo, and he ah. gets smite because it's registering That's, him close enough to get it. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's like, hey, thank you. You just yeah. pushed me back to safety there. Otherwise, I would have been stuck in the pit. Or he would have had to use his flash there instead of in this next moment here where he gets the flash, leap forward, close the distance, yep. and then get in onto Seraph. Like, that's a play where the Azir was helping as opposed to actually... Exactly. Go. It was a good thought, though. You, you, we, can, we cannot criticize the use of the Azir ult because the thought behind it is correct. Yeah, that's Keep him out of the pit. It's just unfortunate and funny looking that Medios yeah. was able to secure it before he got popped back. But here's really what I want to discuss. As, as it was a very back and forth game, and I'm sure Phoenix One will be happy to have secured the victory with the sub in place, what have we learned about this squad with Inori out of the roster? So it's a very different team without him in the lineup because if you watch that game, and you see right there, Envy are ahead the entire time. Yep. Even up until the end, it's still Phoenix One playing from behind. And Inori, he's the guy who's going to be aggressive. He's making the plays. He's pulling the trigger on things to get them back in the game or have it snowball the other way. This is one of Phoenix One's longest games ever, if not the longest. If I can recall, but still, that's because they don't have that proactive guy. Medios, though, to his credit, excellent Drake control with the right. team. Baron secured, and you know he came up big for him. 
Yeah, in a gold disadvantage for the entire game, as you mentioned, secured all four Drakes. So that's really big. And then clutch play at the end. Now let's flip the table here and look at Envy once again. This is a, this is a match that you're walking into saying, hey, this is one of our better opportunities to win. I know they're a, the, you know, an upper echelon team, but with a sub in, with very little practice, this is a team we should be able to dismantle. You had total control of the game, as you've had in multiple occasions before this with early leads, and yet it slips through your hands once again. Where does it come together for this Envy squad? Man, I don't know where it comes together, to be completely honest. They look really scattered. They have all the advantages you'd ever want to be able to work with. First turret, they're getting a lot of kills early on, and then it just slows down, and they allow the other team to play their game. And Envy aren't even, like, controlling objectives, right? They're not getting drakes. No. They're trading two turrets for two turrets and a drake going over, and they make that trade a couple of times. There's a point where it's, like, a thousand and gold up for Envy, but Phoenix One are actually really winning the game with all the drakes that they have. Yeah. So I feel like Envy need to keep doing what they're doing, control objectives more, but also just know how to pull the trigger in a different way because they're relying too much on Seraph for these engages. Yeah. And then nobody's doing anything without him. I will say I did appreciate Lyra's early game in particular. The hit the invading into Meteos' jungle, kind of keeping him on his toes, built a nice CS advantage. But again, if you're building these CS advantages and not, not actually using them to distribute more advantages to the lanes and push forward, it's kind of all What's for the not. What's point? Exactly. <laughs> it's all kind of, it, it does come down to a moot point, but I would like to see Lyra continue to be aggressive, and then it's just up to the team to find a way to bring those advantages to a closer. Player of the game this time around going to Arrow here. Let's talk about this guy. He's kind of flown under the radar to a degree because he's not like a crazy playmaker, but this guy yeah. is solid. I mean, the guy is a former OGN champion, right? Like this guy is a very solid player. And that's the thing is he's flown under the radar because he's had these incredible playmakers like Inori on his team. Ryu will sometimes steal the spotlight, but he's never losing them the game. Arrow exactly. is never the reason they lose a game. In fact, he's one of the big reasons they were able to stay in it because there would be a trade and then he'd make it a little bit better with a W, Deadly Flourish, or pick somebody off. So definitely well-deserved there. In a game they were losing the whole time, only a single death. Yeah, P1 with the comeback here. After our break, we'll see if Envy can tie this one up against Phoenix One. Don't go anywhere because game two comes back when we return.